last week we heard about Jesus going to the synagogue and guest preaching and he, how he shared God's word. And his message was relatively simple. The time has come. All of the promises you've been waiting for, they're about to come true. The kingdom of God is near. The demons aren't in charge. Your sin isn't in charge. Your guilt isn't in charge. You're not in charge. God is in charge. It is his kingdom. Repent. Confess your sin. Admit your guilt. Admit that you cannot fix it. And believe the good news. God is the one who will fix it. Jesus cared for the people's souls. He taught them God's word. And then worship was over. And Jesus went to Simon and Andrew's home. Now, back in those days, it, they were usually multi-generational homes. You would live with your brothers and sisters, grandma and grandpa. Um, that, that's just how you lived. And so Jesus went to Simon and Andrew's home. They were adult brothers that lived in the same place. And Simon was there with his wife and his wife's mother. And as they're walking over to the house, Simon says, Now, Jesus, I'm sorry, but my mother-in-law isn't going to be able to see you. She's got a fever. And Jesus says, Oh, well, where is she? Simon answers, Well, she's got a fever. She's contagious. We, we, we need to leave her be. I don't want you getting sick, too. And Jesus just kind of shrugs and says, Let me see her. Well, Simon takes her into, takes Jesus into his mother-in-law's room. And Jesus crouches down by the woman, picks up her hand that's hot enough, it almost feels like it burns him. And Jesus says, hey, it's time to get up. And he takes the woman's hand and he helps her to her feet. And she looks around and says, I feel great. Simon rushes over to her, puts his hand on her forehead. The fever broke. Mom, that means you got to rest now. Oh, nonsense. I feel fine. And we have a guest. I bet you haven't even made lunch yet, have you? Ah, get out of the way, men. And she goes to the kitchen and starts making lunch. Well, Simon and Andrew and his entire family and Jesus and some other friends, James and John, they spend the day there eating together, talking together, laughing together until sundown. And the moment it's dark, there's a knock at the door. Simon goes to answer the door, and he turns around and says, um, Jesus, it's for you. And Jesus comes to the door, and there is a man with a woman leaning on him. Teacher, my wife, she's sick too. Can you help? I would have brought her sooner, but it was the Sabbath. We're not allowed to work. And Jesus nods and says, I know, you rested. That's good. And he puts his hands on the woman and says, be healed. And like that, the woman is better. And just as she is exclaiming at how much better she feels, another family turns the corner. Rabbi, teacher, my son has a demon. Jesus looks, get out of him. And the demon leaves. And family after family after family shows up. And Simon shakes his head. It's like the whole town has shown up. Not everyone is sick, not everyone has a demon, but everyone wants to come and see the teacher that taught so well and now doesn't just care about their souls, but cares about their bodies too. This is crazy. And they are up really late because Jesus heals every single person and he spends time with every single person. They're all important to him. No one is so sick that Jesus can't help. No one is so unsick that Jesus doesn't care about them. You got a hangnail? Jesus heals that too. The next morning, Jesus gets up before dawn. And in the darkness, he walks out of the house. The only sound is the crunching of his sandals against the ground. And he goes up to the hills to pray. Simon wakes up and he looks around. Well, where did Jesus go? Andrew shrugs. I don't know. To look around the house, he's not there. Well, did he go to the synagogue? They went to the synagogue? No, he's not there. Is he down by the shore? He likes hanging out with the fishermen sometimes. He's not there. They finally find him up on the hills, and they go, Jesus, where have you been? We're all looking for you. And Jesus huffs a little laugh. I've been praying, 
and now it's time for us to leave. We're going to go to the other villages so I can preach there. That's why I've come. You see, Jesus cared about the whole person. He did not just care about people's souls. He cared about their bodies, too. And this is something that uh, churches historically have a hard time with. Churches, and even today, usually focus on one thing or the other. They will look and say, Jesus came to teach. He came to forgive us. And so that's going to be our focus. We are going to take care of people's souls. And that's a good thing. Churches are meant to do that. But historically, and churches get a bad rap for this, someone comes in, they're hungry, we'll fill up your soul. Go and be well. It's like we don't care about the body. But Jesus cared about the whole person. But then what happens often is people will overcorrect, and they'll say, we're going to care about your body. And maybe you've got someone like this in your life. You've got someone that you work with, and you know they don't know who Jesus is. If that person came into work and said, I haven't eaten in days. I don't have enough food. Would you jump to help their body, but still not tell them about Jesus? Do you care about part of them and not all of them? See, see, this is the thing that God did not create us as souls and then put us in bodies and say, you're going to live there for a while, and then I'll take the real you out of your body. You are not a soul. You are human. And that means your body and soul knit together in the most intimate ways. Your body matters because you are your body, and your soul matters because you are your soul. You are both. And when Jesus looks at people, he sees the whole person. And there is not one inch of a person that Jesus does not care for. Christians have that name because we're supposed to be little Christs. Not that we die for the sins of the world. We don't do that. That's just Jesus. But when people look at us, we're, they're supposed to see Jesus. They're supposed to see someone that loves them like Jesus loves them, that, that speaks as God speaks. And I don't know about you, but I failed to do that. I have not loved as Jesus loves. So often it's so easy for me to love the soul and not the body, or love the body and not the soul, to love just a part of a person, and maybe you identify with that if I phrase it that way, huh? Do you love the part of the person that gets along with you well and that other part? I'll come back to you when that other part's bigger. Can you imagine if, if God loved us that way? If he loved just part of us? God shows up and says, I love you. Well, you know, just your eyes and your left shoulder. So that's the part that's going to go to heaven be terrible, wouldn't it? God chops you up and says, no, we're only going to take part of you. And we don't even deserve that much. But this is what Jesus has done. He shows up and he says, I love all of you. When Jesus died, his soul died. His soul took your soul's place. He cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because at that moment, he was suffering all the pains of hell in your place as your substitute. But maybe you know this. It's not just his soul that suffered. His body suffered too as he was nailed to that cross, as he suffered thirst. His body suffered for your body. All of him suffered to save all of you. Not just your soul, not just your body, not just the good parts, all of you. So for all the sins you've committed with your soul, you are forgiven. And for all the sins you've committed with your body, you are forgiven. All of you. If you want to get to know who Jesus is, this is who he is. He's someone who loves the whole person, who cares about all of the person, all of you. And if you're going to be Christian, if you're going to be a little Christ's, you're going to reflect that. Now, until we see Jesus face to face, we will not get that perfectly. But as you go out, see the whole person, not just their body and not just their soul. Show love to the whole person. 
I want you to know Jesus. I want to encourage you with Jesus. Oh, I want to make sure that you've got enough food too. I want to make sure that when it gets stupid cold out that you have heat. I want to make sure that you're taken care of. Just as Jesus spent time laughing with Simon and Peter and James, uh, Simon is Peter, sorry, Simon Peter and Andrew and James and John, spend time laughing with the people around you. Not at them, but encouraging them. Not just showing up and saying, here, I'm going to give you things and leave, but being a friend. Because Jesus cares about the whole person, so let's care about the whole person. If you want to get to know who Jesus is, this is who he is. The person who loves all of you. So you, you who are loved in every single part of you, love those around you too. Amen.